Hi friends, welcome to part two of Container Design 101. Today we are gonna take all these beautiful plants and we are actually going to arrange them. We're gonna take them from stencil to pot. Let's jump on in. Well, hello friends, here is where we left off. I did go to Swanson's, another nursery in Seattle. They did not have a quart size of the hookra I was looking for. So I picked up this one. This is hookra, little cutie, sugarberry. Okay, I thought that was a lovely choice and I felt like it echoed the center of our osteospermum really, really, really well. And I wanna go over a couple of different things here. As you can see, I've re-laid out our plantings on our circular cutout, our stencil. I'm gonna leave a list of this entire recipe in the description below so you can recreate this. But the other thing I wanted to tell you is that you have options. You really have options. So literally you could go to your nursery and you could say, okay, I want this cypress centerpiece, but in terms of like the color of your osteospermum, the color of your viola, the color of your hookra, you can change this up. So you can go with dark purple, you can go with bright yellow, you can go with more whites. Really, honestly, as long as you have this basic framework, you can create this so very easily at home. I want to show you just a couple of quick things though, because I did have some options that I played with. Okay, first and foremost, I had this black mondo grass in my driveway, um, in my little nursery zone, and it definitely needs to be out of its pot, so it's a little fragile, but I wanted to show you a couple different things. The first thing I wanted to show you is this trick. This is something I do quite frequently. I will put a moss or some other textural bit underneath a black mondo grass because it acts like a highlighter. So then you can actually see this beautiful black foliage coming out. So I wanted to touch on that real quick. I don't think I'm gonna put it in this arrangement because it's pretty full, but that is something that if you have a larger pot, if you have maybe 16 inches, 17 inches to play with, you can think about bringing in some more texture for around the rim. And this would be really pretty. This is um, Selaginella brownii. This would look really, really pretty kind of um, coming out over the edge of a pot. You could also do the same thing. This is a little, another little mossy texture. It kind of echoes right here, our cypress. And this also looks sensational underneath the black mondo grass. So if you have a couple extra inches to play with, I might consider adding a texture to the rim. And you could even mirror it on this side because with this hookra, it has the same impact. It has the same effect of highlighting this incredible foliage. All right, now, just to show you how you can play with colors to achieve a different look, I am, I've got four color spots. One, two, three, four. I am going to take out two of these viola. These are the carmine rose. And instead, I'm gonna pop in the deltini. And this is viola deltini copperfield. So as you can see, it really changes the mood of this arrangement. Now for my eye, this was feeling a little samesy samesy, but let's actually put this over here so you guys can kind of see it in front. I'll take out one more of those carmine rose. It really makes this entire arrangement feel a little bit more like dreamy and flowy and less, um, less big pops of color and more fluidity within the color because you have so many varying shades. So this is an option and I just wanted to show this to you because I wanted to show you the power of just simply changing out a singular element. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go back to the Viola Carmine Rose because I'm really loving this play. That to me is really, really stunning. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant this little bad boy up. And again, you're gonna see me walk through the same planting pattern. I'm gonna start with my centerpiece and then I'll work into my mid layer. So my mid layer is something that's gonna be a little bit taller. So that's my osteospermum. I'm gonna have my hookra and I'm gonna have my black mondo grass. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is my small bits, which are gonna go around the perimeter. So if you kind of look at this, we're almost planting in a bit of a triangle. 
Okay, so I'm gonna throw you over here, set you up, and I will show you the container we're planting in today. We are set up on my front porch. I may actually end up moving this planter around to the back just because I'm working with a different color scheme, but we'll figure that out in the future. But for your information, I am using a Crescent True Drop container. This is the Ridge Planter, the Flex Ridge Planter in color smoke. And I will leave a link to it in the description below. This is really, really great if you have, say, a covered area that isn't going to get hit with natural rain um, because it does have a True Drop watering system in here. So it just like simplifies things. I always forget to water my containers that are under a uh, an awning. So in any event, you are gonna see me take this template and literally transfer it directly over here. And again, we're starting with our centerpiece in the back, we're gonna work through the mid layer, and finally with our little bits around the front. All right, let's jump in. What you're gonna see me do also is I do just like a brief bust up of the root mass down here, just a little bit to, it's almost like, it's like stretching your legs after a long car trip. I'm never super finicky about it. It's not like this is going in the landscape, um, but I do just tease them out a little bit just so they're off to a good start. As I am planting this, I want to draw your attention to a few little items regarding my process. First and foremost, you are still using this stencil. That is right. It continues to be a super valuable part of this container design 101 process. The reason I mention this is we have nine different plants that are going in. Now, if I had these all lined up in a row, I could lose my way with regard to plant spacing and how I, what like the end goal is, what the ultimate arrangement will look like. Instead, what you're going to notice me do is I am picking up one plant at a time and only the plant that is actually being planted will be picked up. That way I can make sure to be very accurate with my plant placement. The next item I want to draw your eye to is what I am doing with the soil. I have pre-filled this two inches from the top. However, as I am planting, I am pushing soil toward the root ball of each individual plant and away from the rim of the container. The ultimate goal here is how can I set up future Cape for success? I know that I do not like to be trying to get little bits of soil in between, say, the cypress and the osteospermum and the hookera. Instead, what I want to do is I want this to be really easy to top off my container with soil because invariably that happens with almost every container installation. So again, you want to push your soils towards the center, leaving any space that needs to be filled along the rim of your container. Because again, we're just making life easy for us. Last but not least, with a lot of these plants, I am not necessarily being gentle. If I have a viola that looks as if it is getting a little bit root bound and I can start to see what the inside shape of the container was, I'm just going to rip that off. Now for most of your annuals, they're going to be in really good shape, but at the end of the day, don't be afraid to get a little rough. It is finally backfilling time. We are making sure that each plant is not buried too deep. It is not buried too shallow. I don't want to see root balls and I don't want anything buried way down in a pocket. So do a final check and start backfilling. Okay, so I am kind of a thrifty gardener at my core. And so I simply use an empty four incher. I really like these ones. Oh, I just cracked it. These ones are a little bit sturdier than some of the flimsy four inch annual containers, but I just use this to scoop up extra potting soil and throw it in and tuck all these little babies in.
there you have it. This took me just a matter of seconds. I'm probably gonna come in here later and clean up this rim, but I am not really worried about seeing as much of this rim as I do, because I know in literally a matter of weeks, these violas are going to be spilling out over the edges of the container. My trailer is going to be going bananas. And then this little osteo in the middle is going to be just off to the races. And the same thing with this hookra. If you get in here really closely, it is pushing out. Oh my gosh. Look at all this beautiful new baby growth in here. And this was cut back at the nursery. I could kind of tell that they had been doing some grooming, but this is just about ready to flush out and be absolutely incredible. The other thing about this container is we are right in this, what I call a hip season, right? So we are moving from very cold early spring into the warm winter months, and I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel here. So what I'm going to do, and what's great about this container is this sweet little osteo is going to keep going through the summer that my tricolor wire vine, that's gonna keep going. My black mondo grass, keep going. Hookra, it's off to the races. Centerpiece, nothing's gonna happen to it. So literally, when I am ready to change this over to a summer container, I have one, two, three, four spots that I will be changing out, and that is it. So literally just four small color spots and you are off to your next season. And you can do a couple of different things. I mean, you could put geraniums in here. I might not do that because that might overwhelm it. You could do, um, oh my gosh, there's 8 million. You could do some sun patience in here if you have this in more sun. If you decide this is going to be more shade, this osteo won't love it, but you could transfer this to a shade container and do coleus and a traditional um, beacons field and patience. There are about a thousand ways that you could slice this to really bring it all the way through your next season. So let me know in the comments if you want to see me shift out a container or see how I do a just a really light touch change out um, because that's what I prefer to do. I like to have a lot of, as I call them, Ron Popeil, set it and forget it elements. And I'm just giving myself a little bit of legwork where if I'm at the grocery store and they happen to have some cute four inch something, I can simply just buy them in the moment, pop them in and my front porch looks fresh. Oh, last thing I wanted to mention here, this container, I was gifted this container by Crescent for participating in Container Wars. I'll also link that below. Um, this isn't sponsored by them, but I do really love Paula and Barb. I think they're wonderful human beings and uh, it's actually been a fantastic container for me. A final little note on container design and the size of your container. We've based all of this on a 14 inch container. However, if you have say, a 15 inch, 16, 17, you can still emulate this container, but I'm gonna have you do a couple of different things. First and foremost, I'm gonna have you get a bigger centerpiece. We used a quart. If you have a couple extra inches to play with, you might wanna go for a gallon to keep this in proportion. The next thing, if you have a couple inches bigger, is you could also, I've used a quart hookra over here. You could also go for a one gallon, although I might not do that until you're maybe at like the 18, 19 inch container level. I've also used a four inch black mondo grass over here. You could easily bump this up to a quart or even a one gallon, but honestly, I would just stick to a quart. This thing will grow like crazy. I, I am always mystified by why, why black mondo grass is so expensive at a nursery. Also, if you have a couple extra inches, you could add maybe two more violas on either side. That would give you a lot of nice heft into this container. What I love about container design is you can start with something really basic and then based on the circumference of your container, you can just play more and more and you can add nice little elements that are gonna keep your eye moving and keep the texture game just really top notch. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and if this was helpful and what other elements of container design might be kind of percolating through your brain that you have questions about. I would love to jump in here and answer them for you. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, say hello to your garden for me.